don't be a flint napper and I know that you will listen to me this time because most people don't want to be a flint napper I've been asked by you guys dozens of times to make a video on how to make opal arrowheads I understand opal arrowheads are cool but what you don't know is that to make an arrowhead you have to know how to do flint napping and flint napping believe it or not is extremely difficult to learn I think it's more difficult than learning how to cut opal a great majority of people have absolutely no interest in flint napping over the years hundreds of people have watched me make arrowheads and only two of them have ever asked me hey can I give that a try and one of them was my sister I don't know what happened to me maybe it was the lunar eclipse or maybe I had a mini stroke or maybe it was just that time of the month well I doubt that but anyway I went and made a video on how to make opal arrowheads now this video is pretty long but fortunately I've made it in bite-sized chunks for your convenience you'll notice that I've put the number the minute and second approximately of uh, each section so you can skip ahead and not have to watch it all the sections of the video are one the stone zone which I show a new type of stone two is how to make an opal arrowhead and three flint napping for tough guys we're entering the stone zone and today's rock is this you need to guess what it is before I say it well I'm gonna give it away this is charoite. Charoite was found in Russia in the 40s, and but only really reached lapidary people in the 70s. It's beautiful, purple, that's the top, the normal surface. If you can get it, it's great to have. This is 17 pounds worth. I'm gonna take a slice of this. But I'm also going to take this, this piece that's been altered. I'm going to save this for another time, or maybe you'll see it later in the video if I screw up these two. Perfect. I'm going to clean up. I'm going to clean up. I'm going to clean up. Okay, um, these are the two pieces that I have to make an arrowhead with. These are the, the candidates. I'm going to gr grind both of them. This is a little bit slender. You, you don't ever try to, to decide which, which end of the arrowhead is going to be pointed to begin with. You do the grinding. You leave it the shape that it is. The goal here is to make a perfect... Look at me. <laughs> A perfect lens shape. This is half of a lens shape. This is convex and so both sides. That's that's the goal. So with this one we're gonna use mostly the center material. This one's much this one's much thicker than this one. Some opal cutters are thick. And I don't mean wide. Sort of a cast off. Somebody this looks like higher grade opal, but this part they, they didn't expect to do very much with it. Now, of course, they weren't looking at making our head with, so I'm gonna do that. So, let's get started. Okay, here are the wet specimens. I'm gonna work on this one first. I'm gonna get rid of these. And this is the outer cortex. You, you, you cannot flake cortex. Flint has cortex. It's an outer rim. It's more defined in flint, and that's why it's called a cortex. This is the second piece. I can't help but think that it reminds me of an alligator. I generally call things the top the ones with the best color. That obviously doesn't have the best color. So this has a, a, a thin rim on it, so we'll move that. Now I'm gonna take down the residual sandstone. So 
So the final result has a nice smooth curved surface, both sides, and it's ready to flake. The way you approach a flat thing is by thinning the ends, and you want the center part to be thicker, so you'll only be grinding the edges slightly inward, sort of rolling them in. I've rolled this one in a little bit. And then roll it in. And I'll do the other side. I'll work back and forth on it until it succumbs to my will. Take that, you rat! So you can see it's starting to come in. So now we have two pretty decent preforms. Both have that lens shape. This one's thinner. We knew it would be. So this is more likely to hold up during napping. I wanted to give you an idea of what I'm dealing with here. One day I'm going to do a video about my equipment so that people can see what I use. Just regard this paper towel. I don't want you to think I'm sloppy or something. This is my f former napping workstation and these are my tools for grinding jewelry settings mostly. And there's some of my flint. The big ones are Georgetown, Texas flint nodules. This is my flaking pad. Lots of uh, nappers just use a little pad of, of just leather. This is my flaking pad. It's got a steel layer there. It's got leather on one side and rubber with grooves for the flakes to fall in on the other. In ancient times, pressure flaking was done with antler, the tine of a... This is a white-tailed deer. This is uh, what most modern naps use, something like this. This is a copper bar, which is hammered flat. Uh, some people don't hammer them flat, they just use them round. And you bring that to the edge of the preform, and you push in, and then push inward. Then you pop down like that. I happen to use this soft steel flaker that were made of this white nylon material. I dipped them in black vinyl because whenever I'd go to a, a show or anytime people were around watching me make arrowheads, they'd say, what are those candles? So uh, I didn't like that. These aren't candles. They wanted to see something more natural looking, but unfortunately this is just nylon. It's got a set screw. It's got a, a flat piece of steel in it. I, I, I started using this that putting the notches in an arrowhead. That's how you tie an arrowhead onto the arrow shaft. And the reason I use this hard thing is because if this were just soft, this would bend. If it bent while I had this thin layer of opal on it, it would break. So I'm going to start down on this end, putting the edge on, pressing in and popping off and you can see there's a flake that popped off it went about halfway you overlap these you try to overlap it so the very next place i'll go is the edge of that flake pressing in and popping off and that flake also worked so i'll go to the third one so that's three flakes you can see them one two three four flakes now the next flake and i'll get the tip so that's that's one side that's flaked. Got some pretty deep flakes, but we've covered the side. This whole side is exposed, and we see a little bit of color down at the, the tip end. Nothing anyplace else. So I flaked both sides of this. The first side we did was mostly potched with a little color, but fortunately, the second side came out pretty nice. So all I have to do is put a flake it and get a point on one end and a couple of notches on the other end and we've got we've got a fairly nice opal arrowhead. Just don't turn it around. We've got this really nice area here. Be nice to preserve And you can see, we see the color through it. There are only a few color bars, but that's a nice set of flakes. Look at the flakes in my hand. They're falling in here and sliding down in my hand and they're very sharp, pretty. So now we can see that parallel flaking goes all the way across. And we've preserved our beautiful color bars. 
So now it's flaked on both sides. It really looks good. It's not shaped like an arrowhead yet, but the, the color that I wanted to preserve is there near the top and nice long lines of color. And uh, this is what we have. This area of great color on this one that I had to put the notches beneath that so they could be seen. Pretty nice little arrowhead. This other one has got some pretty nice color. It's, it's, a, it's a very nice little arrowhead. There we have it. Take your choice, white opal or semi-crystal to crystal opal. Which would you choose? Don't choose. Take them both. Here. Now this section is for tough guys. People who really want to know how to flint nap. Now not many of you, but good luck. If you want to make a circle, you just draw a circle. So in other words, what you do with your hands goes directly down onto the onto the medium and it comes out exactly as you laid it down. Now fl chipping flint it doesn't work that way. Flint napping involves two types of flaking percussion flaking and pressure flaking. With percussion flaking you strike a surface and the fracture occurs at an angle to the horizontal. This means that you have to adjust your angle to compensate for the 45 degree difference in the strike angle and the direction it goes. Unlike drawing, this is difficult and this is why flint napping is difficult to learn. Here's a piece of flint. This is the outside of the flint nodule. I think we went over this in previous episodes, but how does flint form? It's made of silicon dioxide, just like opal, but it forms in holes or spaces between rocks. Holes, I tell you! Holes, I tell you! Silica-bearing water gets in there, maybe dries up, and leaves a little coating of silica. And it does it another 10,000 times over a million years or 10 million years. or And what we have is a deposit of of silica. It's just like opal except that the molecules aren't aligned the way they are in opal. That's what gives the opal the play of color. This particular nodule came from the Pedernales River outside of Fredericksburg, Texas. I've already made some chips on it but I wanted to use this to demonstrate. The prevailing theory at least among flint nappers and, and archaeologists is that the basic tool for chipping flint was antler. My theory is that instead of using these giant... <laughs> I dropped my tool. Instead of using these massive tools, they, they didn't have the copper of course. They, don't get me started. They, yeah, the, the, the ancient copper age, they had a little bit of copper, but it wasn't enough. Their warrant, this is not going to do the... This will do the damage, but this isn't available. So what did they use? In my opinion, and I think I'm right, archaeologists could argue with me. I'm not an archaeologist, so, and I'm the one making the video, so I have to be right. Right? Flint, like glass, like opal, is very sharp, and, and it can cut you. In this case, it can cut me. So if, if I wanted to take off a flake from right here, the way I'd do it is I'd turn it upside down and I'd hit here. When I strike down on it, the, the, the force vector, the force goes at a 107 degree angle to the way I'm doing it. So in other words, I drew the circle and everything went exactly where I put it. But when, I, when, I, when I'm trying to knock a flake off of, uh, you're not actually seeing what you're doing. It's it's happening at an angle to to what you're doing. It's like almost like drawing or doing something in a mirror. So I happen to know that this this particular angle right there is about the same angle as here. So if I hit it there, I'll probably remove this bit of of material. So let's give it a try. Well. I missed slightly, and I didn't do well. Uh, well, I did better than expected. But anyway, so that flake came off the bottom, and since it's hard to see the bottom, I, I'm feeling it with my hands despite the glove. So I'll try it again. 
that one got what I expected to get from the other one. So that came off of right here. And basically, you, the angle was 107 degrees. This is called fracture like this. You, you may have seen it, uh, at least uh, to some extent, back in the day. People would have plate glass windows, and boys, generally, could be girls, armed with BB guns, would shoot the place glass windows, and when they did, it would punch a cone of glass out of the other side. There'd be a little tiny hole in the front, and in the back, you'd have a perfect cone. So did ancient flint nappers really use antler? It seems very unlikely. When all they had to do was reach around and find a rock. Just a regular old, but take, you just take a rock. Look at there. You can remove large flakes just with a rock. What is the likelihood that they traveled to Mon Manitoba to get this when they had to just reach down into the creek and get this? Well, Manitoba's beautiful. But, but to me, it seems much more realistic that most of the percussion flaking occurred with just a hammerstone. One of the ways that you can make beautiful arrowheads and not have to learn the whole flint napping thing is to merely do pressure flaking on a surface that has perfect curvature. To be perfect for flaking, this should be lens shaped, should be convex, convex, and some people use what's called flake over grinding. They take, this is quarter inch uh, obsidian, and they take it and put it on a grinder like I, I use for my opal, and they get a perfect convex sides. And here is what you get. You can see that convexity. When you, when you make a pressure flake over a smooth curved surface like that, the flake will travel a great distance. So I'm going to press on this edge until a flake, press hard, raise up, and there we go, a flake. Let me try another one right next to it. I have two flakes. Try another one. Three flakes. So this is the idea. You just press the flakes from either side. And they meet approximately in the middle. Good day, mate. I don't know any other real words. I like wanker. Wanker. He's a wanker. I guess it might be vulgar. I think the British use that term too. He's a wanker. He's a wanker. Look, he made a black arrowhead when he could have made a beautiful opal arrowhead. This one's actually better made. For the, those of you still around, I hope you enjoyed the video that I shouldn't have made to begin with, but I did. And I guess I'll see you next time around.